All right, everybody, we are live, I believe. Let me just refresh this just to make sure I put this as the broadcast. Let me double check. So there we go. We are live. I Let me just there we go. How are you sure doing today, Valia Brand? How's life, brother? Uh, doing great, man. Uh, life life is going great, you know. Couldn't couldn't be going better. And uh, yeah, dude, thanks thanks for having me on. Like, uh, it, it's so cool. The the community itself, like with with hacks or some of the people that you know follow Richard Hart and stuff, was like super small in the in the very beginning. Um, and 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 now it's just like with pull chain and all these other things, it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it's it's cool to you know, see people like your channel and, and all these other people that you can, that you can learn from. Thanks a lot, man. And definitely, I want to come on your channel as soon as possible, man. I've seen what Hell you've yeah. done. I've seen all of how I see your passion for Hex. I see your passion for Pulse Chain. I, I see the car you have, which is really sweet. I saw the picture you had, which was awesome. And um, we got so much to talk about, man, today with, with market conditions, with some historical background. With Pulse Chain imminent, the launch imminent with Pulse X, we have Hex to talk about. We have a little bit of background on, on what's happening with Luna. I can't believe. So we got a <laughs> lot to talk about, man. So wait, j just to clarify though, the the car itself that's actually not mine. Like I, I just drive a Corolla. <laughs> well, well, actually, after this, I'm picking up an I'm picking up a 2022 Elantra. So oh, I'm nice, a, dude. I'm a very nice, happy man. puppy. So. Dude, that's cool. That's yeah, cool, man. You know, My gotta week. have stuff that's consistent. So vets in crypto, Corey Costa, keep rolling. I want to say thank you so much, Bally and Brand. Thank you so much, Frank Sweaty Hex again. Thank you so much. So let's get started with a discussion on Hex. I put something out on Twitter today, and it said, basically, to, to summarize, it's ironic it's, it's rather ironic that people called Hex a scam, and it's basically the only project right now staying afloat in this bloodbath. It, it, and it, it goes to show that so many people were, were making fun of Hex. I see people saying, you know, Luna is better than Hex, and lo and behold, Hex is the one that's staying afloat in this market bloodbath. So I'm... I, you know, it's a it's a little bit uh, interesting to see what's happening right now. Totally, yeah. Well, it's it's so true. I mean, I don't know in in life that I've kind of realized where whether it's it's one person or you know a person representing a community, but when they're when they're all pointing the fingers at one other person or you know in this case the, the hexagons that you had mentioned, Hex and, and Richard Hart, uh, you know, you kind of just have to look at the results and and you know in, instead of like my team versus your team and this side versus that side mm -hmm. it's like well let's just you know let's let's compare with without bias and and so anyways yeah you see a lot of people that that don't realize that like hex has had like 890 i think today's like 891 days of you know 100 percent uptime and and obviously people people you know people it's just like with uh you know religions or other things like this but people mm -hmm. they're married to their beliefs with with their where their cryptos and whatever coins that they have invested money in you know they're gonna they're gonna fight to the death of that um exactly. versus kind of you know actually listening to some of the logic and the facts and stuff and, and it goes to show when we talk about this from a historical background in human nature human beings are naturally tribalistic it's how we've survived mm. over the the millennia we are a tribalistic species but right now with an asset class that is under massive threat right now and the reason why i say that is this with the collapse of ust in my opinion i believe that this will be used wholeheartedly to to absolutely make way for the justification of cbdc's and this is mm -hmm. the exact mind state i have said numerous times in live streams that is terrifying to me there is a collapse of the libertarian ethos of cryptocurrency the complete collapse of the virtue of what made cryptocurrency special peer-to-peer -peer, getting rid of middlemen staying out of nation keeping nation states out keeping financial institutions out those mind states are the, that ethos is under massive threat right now for a more progressive ethos that cryptocurrency, in order for it to survive, 
is to have to be adopted by nation states, by governments, by economic institutions. And I don't know if that's a, a, a sign of progress, maturation, or the biggest trap for cryptocurrency, in my personal opinion, that we have to now rely on nationalist national validity for our market to absolutely absolutely justify this asset class into mass adoption and right now we have under threat now DeFi. we see now with DeFi, there there are so many exploits of DeFi using ust as an example there are so many things right now that the media can utilize against cryptocurrency that being tribalistic right now is not in any project's interest mm. and i really think that we all need to come together because i re this is very reminiscent of late tw late january 2018 to me at least to mm. me yeah that's actually a very good point i mean uh yeah you know it, it's not fun when when your bags are going down and and you know people are rubbing salt in the wound you know mm. at, at the same time um, you know, you bring up a good point too with the central bank digital currencies and, and, you know, you see it more often, uh, today now than you do ever, uh, mm -hmm. as, as kind of things are kind of rolling into that kind of society. I mean, even like I mentioned in the Washington state area, like, you know, cash is not accepted at certain places and, and new arenas that they're doing. it's like, uh, I don't like that kind of future that we're going to, but, but the point is, is that, you know, you mentioned like DeFi too. Well, it's interesting because so much of like. DeFi, decentralized finance and stuff like that, like, you know, some of it, some of it isn't decentralized and some of it, you know, um, actually is very, you know, centralized or like, you know, uh, the, the risk is spread across what seems to be, you know, more decentralization that you, you find out like with, with UST or some of these other things, mm -hmm. not UST specifically, but when you see things like that, it's like, oh, okay, you know, it makes people kind of you know, second guess and in, in question and invest in crypto, you know, cheers to him. Uh, he's another good buddy of mine, but he was saying, you know, we need to take care of fellow crypto Luna peeps. Yes, we do. This affects the whole community. And, and I agree. I mean, you know, the best thing that you can do is, is once again, not to, to rub something in someone's face. And, and if you are at least give them a solution or, or, you know, um, kind of let them know that, Hey, you know, here's what the, the space was intended for. And, and here's kind of how you can make up for some of that. Cause you know, it's not, it's not funding. I mean, I've seen it with Litecoin and stuff like, you know, buying at 365, even though I was buying at 30 uh, and then go back down all the way to 30. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad. It really is because I'm watching, I'm watching Luna right now. I mean, I actually didn't get much sleep because I was watching Luna most of the night and I couldn't believe what I was seeing with the amount of money. I mean, the amount, well, the amount of money that's taken out of their market capitalization, it went from $115 last week to now it's, I haven't even checked. I'm presuming it's around the dollar 40 range. And if you go into the telegram right now, it's like people are like saying, I lost my life savings. I'm going to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I, uh, where, where is the founder? We're going to go get him. And it's like, yeah. this is the dark side of cryptocurrency because what happens is, is people, people become survivalistic when everything they've worked for is now lost. And that's very terrifying to me. And mm -hmm. my, I feel for the Luna and Terra community. I really do. I, I really hope to God that things recover. I hope to God that lessons are learned. And I hope that we can, as a cryptocurrency ecosystem, move forward. So, so let me ask you this, Bally, to, to get to, get to, to Hex and Pulse Chain. How long have you been in Hex and, and what was the most enticing reason why you got into Hex? Like what was the what was the aha moment? Yeah, so I mean I'd actually been following Richard since 2017. Uh about March 15th was when I started seeing his channel. Um, because the thing is, so to answer your question, so I've been in Hex since day one, um, since Richard had initially, you know, launched it. And you know, I've always been kind of following um richard and things like that because he was always super up to date with kind of everything going on in crypto and when i first found him in 2017 it's kind of as you mentioned like i was following you know like jay sniff and some of these other you know mm -hmm. dippies at the uh in, in hindsight right some of these dippies and uh and richard was one of those, was one of those people that i was following too and and him out of maybe you know 10 other people you know that i was following was always the you know seemed the most genuine and authentic and 
And I liked kind of hearing some of the information, um, once again, kind of like a, a no BS attitude, which I really like about people, or, or mm -hmm. which I really like about people or, or Richard in that case. But anyways, when he had said, uh, you know, he had same thing, he had, he had called the top in, uh, in 2017 for Bitcoin at 20,000. And same thing, I like I hadn't, you know, I, even though I was following him for probably like six months, then I was still kind of like, it's kind of as RG3 has said, it's almost like a Stockholm syndrome where you're like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's different this time or, or it can't be true, can it? And then you just start seeing the, the price tanking and it's like, you know, denial and stuff like this, you know, the, the psychology of a market cycle. Exactly. Um, so, so when Richard had said like, hey, I want to create a crypto, I want to do it better. I was like, well, well, good, because I was just about to exit crypto after, you know, freaking, you know, yeah. Satoshi Light, Char Charlie Lee dumping and all this other stuff. And, and you kind of realize to your point, like, what what is crypto? You know, you'd mentioned the the peer to peer and and things like this. Um, you know, we're really at a point in in history where it's like, you know, things have never been more you know censored at at a, at a time. Yep. And then and then you've got like just a little bit of 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 light kind of shining through the the city on a hill. Um, in in a you know, if we didn't have crypto into the future that we're going into, I would be you know very bearish. But I'm bullish on the future with. Uh, some of that tech we have uh, against some of the CBDCs and things like that, because you know that's just complete dystopia in my it opinion. Is. Yes, it is, a and that's why I'm afraid. This is why cryptocurrency, the ideology, and I can't stress this anymore, that this ideology is under threat. It is under threat from financial and governmental institutions because we now are reliant on this validity, this validation of this market to create this this ecosystem of sustained increases in prices and i remember in late 20 in early 2018 when this started when, when the bear market of 2018 started it was because south korea I believe banned icos now what we're seeing is we're seeing collapses in public trust not from institutions that hold cryptocurrency but projects within cryptocurrency such as DeFi, for example and, and it's scary to see luna drop from where it once was and i think personally and i like how crypto cr7 here said i was almost done to a crypto and hex saved me I'll, I'll say a little synopsis about myself in 2017 um i got into two coins called bitcoins now it's voyager and substratum and mm. um if you're from 2017, you'll probably remember those two names. And um, for sure. yeah, in January, I was stupid. I didn't know what the amount of money I had meant. And my portfolio went from six figures down to four in about a month. And yeah. um, it was horrible. I couldn't leave my house. I couldn't do anything. And there's also someone in this chat named Frank who I've been with in um, crypto for five years. And we both felt it. It was not fun. Um, it, was it was dangerous, but we learned from it. And I'm hoping that those who didn't, I'm really hoping to God that people who were in this in 2017 and saw the bear market of 2018 to 2020 actually took profits in 2021. But the more I look at Twitter and other social media outlets, it looks like not many people did, mm. which is very unfortunate. But I, I will say that Hex has been a very saving grace here. It is a big saving grace for a lot of people. And it's been mm -hmm. holding its value very 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 well i'm very yeah. surprised i'm not surprised i'm just like surprised in a good way it's amazing right well like you're, you're totally right and and it's done this before too i mean you know ethereum was like yeah like in the adoption amplifier days you know it was like 89 bucks something like that and and same thing that had dipped 85 percent and and i agree with what richard says where he's like i believe in the dip you know like and 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 it's funny too because some of the rhetoric at the very beginning was like uh, when I because I was on on like Reddit a lot for for getting a lot of the information and and same thing where you hear like oh it's it's different this time you know this time is different you know um, even though the the bull market had clearly ended yep. but uh, I agree with what you're saying man and like you know unfortunately I've seen it within you know even some of the hex community like actually on the other tab right here I've got a gym rat crypto who's 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 absolutely been been on a on a roll hey, uh, him and Sam. Up. Yeah, like my my brother, uh, he's he's actually in the crypto fitness challenge, which I saw you, um, I saw you, your stream with with Sam. But mm -hmm. but he kind of says that they're like uh, 
you know, like a, a yin and yang, you know, kind of duo where, where Jim Rat and, and Sam Stold are, are good. But, but anyways, the point that I wanted to say without getting off track was, you know, Tangent, he's on the, the stream from this morning and he was saying how he had had some sort of like some sort of auto balancer or some sort of bot um, that he had had on, on KuCoin, which is a central exchange. Mm -hmm. And it had pretty much, uh, yeah, kind of really royally effed him um, from from kind of this auto balance thing and, and from the, the you know the Luna and stuff like that. So it really goes to show you when you say that you know it's it's cool to see or it's interesting to see that it's kind of holding up so well. Yeah, I mean you see you see Bitcoin's gone from like sixty nine thousand at its top to I mean whatever it was earlier today like thirty something thousand. Yeah. You know and and like you know same thing where people are like. Oh, and it's it's interesting too, where, as you say, like, you you would hope and and you would expect. I mean, someone someone like yourself, right? That's kind of like a history major. That like yep. that people would be able to learn from their history. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, instead of this time, it's different. Or instead of kind of you know being that sheep with the other sheep that's walking into the the slaughterhouse, you know. Yep, exactly. And, and I, I want to touch on what you said about centralized exchanges. Did you see? I want to I want to show. <clears throat> I want to see. I want to show you exactly what he said about centralized mm -hmm. exchanges. Richard Hart tweeted something today and, and actually highlighted it. He said, moreover, and this is from Coinbase, moreover, because custodially held crypto assets may be considered to be the property of a bankruptcy estate. In the event of a bankruptcy, the crypto assets we hold in custody on behalf of our customers could be subject to bankruptcy proceedings and such customers could be treated as our general unsecured creditors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You sure you yeah. want to keep the coins on exchanges, guys? You sure you want to do that? Come on. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, dude. I, I'm I'm so glad that I learned that lesson, man. Because because it was uh, it wasn't it wasn't Richard that I had first heard say, but it was it was like I think it was actually like Trace Trace Mayer, and you know, same thing. He's just disappeared as well. Like where the hell is he? But um. But anyways, where you hear that saying of like, not your keys, not your crypto. And, yeah. and I'm glad that when I had first gotten into, you know, Bitcoin and Litecoin and Ethereum, that they were like, hey, you know, if you have, because what the, the exact like almost verbatim post that I had seen on Reddit was like, you know, if you have more than like $100 worth of XYZ crypto, you know, it's it's worth it to to get a hardware wallet to uh, to store it properly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like having a uh, something like a fire resistant safe or things like that, where you know if you have important documents and you're gonna yeah. keep them protected. But um, but yeah, you know, it it is unfortunate to see, right? Because like, you know, I mean, even though hex is hex, hex is doing well and it's kind of you know showing strength in in signs of a of a bear market it doesn't yeah. mean that you're happy to see you know other hexagons get wrecked or 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 anyone get wrecked for that matter like that's you know that's not the goal here it really isn't but but hopefully some of those people can learn from those those mistakes dude cuz like my most expensive even with hex like um i had i had known litecoin and and known how to use hardware wallets but and I'd even participated in like the the EOS uh, ICO and things like oh, that, wow. writing to the to the contract. But um, but that was just following a video step by step. I effed up on day one of uh, of hacks and like, you know, because you had to manually paste the the address, the contract address, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so, anyways, you, I've learned from those mistakes. And and I'd message Richard, and he's like, "Hey, there's nothing you can do here. You know, this is completely DeFi, which is cool because." You know, uh, a lot of people, they they are, to your point, they are looking for like a, a saving grace and things like this. And, you know, we have to be responsible for our own decisions. Exactly. We need to be, I, I say that for those louder in the back, we need to be responsible for our own decisions. DeFi is basically, in all seriousness, so it, it, it's, it's meant to be self-custodial, which means that all of the responsibility is on you. And... I don't think many people in cryptocurrency are aware or even are willing to be able to it's not that they're not willing they're they're very we're so used to having other people manage our finances with banks and other traditional financial products that self custody is a, is especially in crypto is a, is is um is very um unique that's the word i'm looking yeah. for yeah and mm -hmm. and and i ponder how 
how this is going to affect the broader base of blockchain and cryptocurrency. Will people realize that they need to be more trepidatious with DeFi? Will people realize that they need to be more vigilant no matter what project? Because it goes to show that a top 10 cryptocurrency can collapse in a matter mm. of hours. In a matter yeah. of hours. So, so w with that being said, and Hex has really, really been a saving grace. And I'm very, 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 very happy that a lot of people in Hex have been able to stay afloat during this. And I think that Pulse Chain and Pulse X are also going to be very big saving graces as well. And I saw Wendy's Crypto Wendy's podcast with uh, Richard yesterday. I watched the whole thing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, I, I'm very, very excited that Richard said uh, two weeks, maybe less, because Pulse Chain and Pulse X they solve massive problems in cryptocurrency and I, i'm personally very very excited it's basically it's basically the the projects that i'm basically the only projects i really am focused on right now with the exception of a few others mm -hmm. and pulse chain and pulse x and hex are basically right now i think they're going to be saving graces for a lot of people in this bear market no matter how long it lasts and who knows where the bottom is i don't know where the bottom is and i'm not going to convey that i do um, mm -hmm. but I, I, I actually learned about, uh, Pulse Chain and Hex from someone who's very, uh, it was one on Twitter, but his name is ha Harry. His old Twitter handle was inverse bull. And he talked about okay. Pulse Chain in, in, um, what was I going to say in September. And mm -hmm. I learned about Pulse Chain in September and I got into the community and I have to say Hex and Pulse Chain is the most supportive community in the five years of cryptocurrency that I've ever been in. No questions asked. Yeah. No, no questions asked. I, they, I, this community went from me on YouTube with a dying channel to now a, a community that's supportive. That's very, very helpful. That's very informative and very tight niche that I could never, ever personally see hex or even pulse chain when it launches failing because of the, the strength and the conviction and the fortitude of this community. I really don't. Mm. I don't see it failing. Yeah. Well, and, and it's true too, because um, you know, uh, I think it was yesterday on on Crypto Wendy with with Richard Hart where where she was kind of like asking, well, like is is Pulse Chain gonna be susceptible to some of these things with uh Terra and some of these other things where you know you see some cryptos like iota did it in 2017 where yeah. they tried to roll their own blockchain and stuff yep um but the point is is that the code itself is like 99.9 well maybe like 99 um percent ethereum based code and so mm -hmm. it is kind of doing the e2.0 but but sooner and and obviously yeah everyone wants um, you know, things like proof of stake versus say proof of work if if there's no necessarily difference with the security. Um, and, and what you kind of have too with Pulse Chain that you mentioned, the community, it's it's unlike anything, <clears throat> unlike anything we've seen before. And and where else do you have like a telegram group or you know, whether it's yeah. Hex, Pulse X or you know, Pulse Chain com where you can go in and and ask questions and things like that. Cause you know, the last thing that we want to see when when doing like the world's largest airdrop is, is people getting wrecked and people getting screwed. And so you really have to kind of like filter the signal through the noise for the, the new person that's out there. Cause what? there's just so much noise that's out there. <clears throat> Sometimes people with bad intentions trying to screw you over. So it really takes some discernment. And, and not to mention the fact that when we look at hex and, and, and pulse chain, for example, you bring up the telegram groups, there's over 120,000 people collectively in the hex and pulse chain communities and i'm not even counting pulse x i'm not counting the prc altcoin channels i'm not counting the different pulse chain projects the projects launching on pulse chain i'm not counting those just pulse chain and hex not even hex trading or hex pro there's 120,000 people members and there was about i think hey richard hart said 120,000 unique addresses um sacrifice for pulse chain and pulse x and collectively between the two i believe it was around two billion dollars i mean that kind of speaks for itself here you got a documentary yeah. coming out on the highest of stakes i mean the gatekeeping of this project and hex and that's that's something that also surprises me hex has mm -hmm. been one of the most 
gatekept cryptocurrencies, gatekept cryptocurrencies I've ever seen. And still, even with being gatekept, with being ridiculed and mocked constantly by influencers and furus, I like to call them, <laughs> it's still standing. It's still standing. This community is still going strong. The 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 po- I want to call it the positive zealotry of people who are in hex and pulse chain fascinate me in a very very good way and it makes me very um secure with my investment in pulse x and pulse chain hands down no questions asked yeah i mean you you look at any other founder right and and that was one thing that nerd girl had said a, a long time ago where yeah with with tesla you're kind of betting on elon musk and, and it's not solely just that like when when you're you know in hacks pulse chain pulse x you're not solely you know, betting on Richard, obviously right. <clears throat> it, it's more than just him, you know, right? But if if someone's got like it's just as Warren Buffett has said, like with with certain investments, where like if you've got like the that golden goose or you know that specific horse that's doing the race, like why why would you why would you want to diversify on on a whole bunch of different other things when you can kind of just go on lucky number seven? Um so so anyways, yeah, it's really exciting to see. And um the track record itself kind of speaks for itself. I mean um, we saw with with Hex the 10,000 X in under mm-hmm. two and a half years. And then now the same thing is going to happen with with Pulse Chain. And, and, you know, why wouldn't it happen with with Pulse X too? So there's going to be a lot of wealth creation that's that's like that second generation of, of wealth being created uh, on top of just the first one. Exactly. And I like how you talked about that. I like how you discussed diversification. And the reason why I say that is this. I'm sure you're familiar with Grand Cardone. I'm sure you are. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Sure. okay. So I watch, I, I have his book. I have the 10 extras right here. Grand oh, nice, Cardone. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. So I want to go back to a historical little background. I'm going to quote what he basically said and then have a little historical background here. Grant Cardone said that diversification, though it's basically safe, it's not the ticket to true wealth. He, and mm-hmm. he brought up three he brought up two titans at the turn of the 19th into the 20th century who went all in on two things and uh, they became one of the well they became almost they became basically um two of the most richest men in history you had rockefeller yeah. who went all in on standard oil and then you had carnegie who went all in on steel and then you had vanderbilt yeah. that went all in on railroads you had three capitalistic titans going all in in one enterprise and their wealth generational is an understatement. Look at look at that and then say mm-hmm. to yourself, if you trust an asset and you know, you can speculate, but you know and have this feeling that this project is going to skyrocket, then I really think that diversification, though it's safe, and I wouldn't say for people not to do it, but for me personally, I'm the type of person that just goes all in on one to three projects and just lets it ride. I I don't I don't see a need to diversify heavily when I see Pulse Chain, Pulse X, the companies that I work for within crypt within cryptocurrency, Love.io mm-hmm. that's launching on Pulse Chain, which I'm very excited for. And and I also wanted to touch on 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 PRC twenties and projects launching on Pulse Chain. Do you think that it's justifiable? That there's still a lot of, and I've seen it die down, but a lot of hex and pulse chain maxis kind of like undermining the voices of pulse chain oriented projects that are launching. I don't think it's fair that these projects are not given a voice. And that's exactly what I try to do on this channel. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, it, it's it's a good question, right? Um, I mean, you know, if, if, you're, if you're taking everything that's being created and you're comparing it to... You know, you're comparing it to to hacks, right? Like, not not everything is going to be, like, you know, completed. Not every, you know, some of the stuffs are going to be project and and things like this. You know, and and as far as the audits and stuff like this. So so as far as kind of comparing it to to that standard, I mean, yeah, there's almost there's almost like no cryptos even even on Ethereum that kind of you know maybe a handful, maybe I don't know under twenty, right? Um, as as far as you know, as far as some of that goes, I wish. I wish some of these people, um, and, and, you know, I don't know, I'm not perfect either. Right. You know, sometimes I have to introspect and be like, okay, you know, even, even if I did have an opinion or things like that, well, maybe I should shut my damn mouth and, and like do what's do what's best for like, 
with Paul Shane specifically, people have to understand this, that like, it's nothing, nothing like Hex at all. You know, like Paul Shane itself is a whole blockchain, a whole network. And so if you're crap talking people that are, that are coming on, like, like Motley experiences, Tanny's experiences, some of these other people have experiences that wanted to build things and there's being, you know, crap talked by, by some of the people in the community. Well, like, you know, how is that incentive? I mean, other than obviously the whole system state that's coming over, how Mm -hmm. is that incentive for, for someone to, uh, you know, that's putting in their own money for some of these things to, to kind of, you know, want to, want to stay motivated. And, and once again, like, I don't know, uh, you, you do kind of have like a lot of, and, and once again, I'm kind of guilty of this too, you know, um, you know, at times and stuff, but, but you kind of, you, you think back and you look and you just realize like, no, we need to, we want, that's what I like about like, uh, pulse con and things is yep. it's getting as many people from different projects, from things that they're doing to uh, show up at a, at a conference and kind of, you know, mm-hmm. explain what they're doing on the pulse chain. So, so I think it's good. Exactly. But, but you're, you're right that I, I don't think it's, it's, it's uh, necessarily good for the visual of the community or, or things like that to, to constantly, you know, crap talk, you know, new people that are coming on, just like, just shut, you know, sometimes just shut your mouth is, is better. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree. I've worked with other projects where the, there are amazing project. I've worked in other blockchain projects where dApps wanted to be developed on these chains, but they were basically shut out and pushed away by the community. And we don't want that as a new chain. We want a blockchain that's vibrant. Now, I understand the skepticism because right now we have seen so many different projects just just basically piggybacking off of the Pulse chain name. And some of them have turned out to be scams. I'm not going to debate that. What, when I interview projects, it, 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 it can be risky because I don't know in six to seven months or a year from now if they end up being rug pulls, if they end up being scams. I don't know. I've been trying to vet them more. I like to I like to now um, interview people who are preferably doxxed. And but this is this is the byproduct of a new and exciting pro, a new exciting blockchain is that people and project developers in quotations, will utilize that that notion that new blockchain to fill their own pockets because they know that they can take advantage of new investors but there are a lot of projects that i have i have interviewed on my own channel that i'm very excited for love.io pulseverse mintra power city um i've interviewed so much that half of them are going over my head liquid loans um these are all fantastic projects like we need to give them a chance. Exactly. Crypto CR7 says it best. At least give them a chance to show some proof, but keep an eye open. Exactly. Always be vigilant. Always always know exactly what's happening. <clears throat> I think we lost him. Yeah, he's refreshing his internet. He will be right back. So right now, I just want to say while we're waiting on him, he has to refresh his internet. But yeah, you got to give these projects a chance. You got to give these cryptocurrency projects that are launching on Pulse Chain, a, a significant chance to prove themselves. Because if you don't have that chance to prove themselves, you're not going to have more, more projects launching on Pulse Chain if you screw them out. And I don't, I don't think that's a benefit. I think that's actually a drawback for, for a new blockchain project. And I think that's rather, I think that's rather scary. I think that's rather, <clears throat> I think that's not what we want in a new blockchain project. So right now I see Frank asked, which one do I think is best? Well, I want to use the word best, but I want to say my favorite project right now is the project that I'm working with is love.io, which is a micro tipping censorship resistant cryptocurrency that that's able to be used for loyalty programs, donations, um, uh, cash back rewards. It's a very exciting project. I like Mintra. I like Pulseverse. I like um, I like Liquid Loans a lot because it emphasizes people not selling. All right, my man is back. It's sorry about that. Hey, no, don't worry about it, brother. Don't. I understand completely. Internet is annoying sometimes. Don't worry. I've had, bro. I have been in hour long, like pre recorded podcasts, and then my internet turns into like a Walmart connection, and I leave. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry, brother, but it's good to have you back. So I was just uh, commenting on, on a few projects that I like that are launching on Pulse Chain, which is like Love.io, uh, Mintra, Pulseverse, Power City, Liquid Loans. Um, 
why, why am I drawing a blank here? I've interviewed like 25 different projects. Um, I like, uh, I like, Pul I like um, Pulse Doge. I like these new, I knew these new projects. And you know what? People make fun of meme coins. And I used to be one of those people that despised meme coins with a burning passion. But you know what? They bring people in. As long as they're not scams, I don't care. As long as they're not scams, I don't care. So with that being said, you have to trust and then verify. I absolutely agree with that 100%. You have to trust and verify. Totally. So let me ask you this, Balliot. In, in your opinion, what is your what is the most exciting feature about Pulse Chain for, for you personally? Dude, so, so as someone that's seen fees go from, I mean – it was like a penny. Yeah. It was like a, I mean, when Ethereum was $80, stuff like this and, and the actual, um, not sacrifice cause it, cause not, it wasn't a sacrifice, but the right. adoption amplifier, you know, smart contract itself, uh, the AA and stuff. Um, I would just say it's the low fees, right? Because I, I've got a whole bunch of people that, you know, a lot of them I had onboarded early on and things like mm -hmm. this, but then, you know, some of the people you try to onboard onboard later on, and, and they're like, you know, maybe they just want to put in like a hundred bucks. Right. And then if, if you're, if you're just starting off fresh, you know, there's not, not only going to be a fee if you're, if you're going from say Coinbase or Gemini and things like that. But then when you get into the actual DeFi and start swapping, you know, maybe that hundred dollars becomes like a, I don't know, maybe like 70 if you're, if you're lucky, right. If you happen to get in on some, some lower way uh, swap. So, so for me, it's definitely the, the, the fees themselves, the the cheap fees, right? Because on testnet, you look at what's going on and we've never seen, I was just telling a, a friend about this the other day, but we've never seen a, a testnet get get banged so hard, you know, like it, mm -hmm. it have so many transactions almost as if it, it was the the main net, you know? Yeah. So it's really believe. exciting. Yeah, that that that's insane to me that I had the amount of transactions, the millions, I believe, of transactions that are on testnet. It's absolutely astonishing to me. And I actually saw on the V2B testnet that I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe the indexing of the blocks is complete. Um, I may be wrong, but last time I checked, it went from like 72 to 82%. And then we now are seeing that this is very, very, very close. And I agree with the fees. I'm not trying to pay a mortgage for a, new, a mortgage uh, fee for a Uniswap transaction. It's, it's pathetic. It's, it's absurd. It's, it's ridiculous. And personally, for me, I think personally, for me, I think that fees are the biggest and most important issue that cryptocurrency faces right now, especially with Ethereum, because a lot of these projects that are on Ethereum are going to die out because of it, they're because they're not going to be able to afford their projects. They're not. So Pulse Chain is an amazing alternative. And I would say definitely, I think the environmentally friendly component and the low fees as well, plus I know I said one, but I'm naming three. Plus the community. Yeah, totally, dude. Plus the community. Now, what do I think about Pulse Chain launching now if this is a bear market? I honestly think this, Frank Rafano said. What do I think? Hex launched in a bear market and look how it's performed. Pulse Chain is an entirely different beast <clears throat> with Pumpamentals, with Pulse X as well, which has buy and burn functions, which has yield farming. I think that that's a great opportunity. And you know what? For the people who missed the sacrifice, and again, no one has a goddamn clue what's going to happen to one's <laughs> main net launches. No one has a clue. Yeah, but in the bear market, it gives people more opportunities to maybe, maybe more opportunities. Let me, let me backtrack. To buy, where if we were in a full out bull market right now, you may not have that chance. But I believe personally that this is actually a blessing in disguise. Hex launched in a bear market. And if Pulse Chain launches in a bear market, I'm fine. The main focus mm -hmm. I want to say mm -hmm. is I want Pulse Chain to launch without bugs. So I don't mind waiting. Is, is sometimes that everybody makes the joke two more months, um, but I think it's necessary. A gate kept cryptocurrency, everyone's going to look at Pulse Chain to find the most minuscule issue to attack it. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's exactly why it is so important for this project, Pulse Chain, to launch with near perfection. Mm. Hands down. Because if it doesn't, Gatekeeping right now with an ethos in cryptocurrency right now of anger, denial, um, capitulation, this project will get crucified. Mm. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's so true. I mean, um, yeah, it, it's interesting how how people people hate on success, you know, and like, mm -hmm. and obviously, uh, eight hundred and ninety or eight hundred ninety one days later of one hundred percent uptime, and it's like, yeah. you know, sh show me the flaw, you know, uh, everything, every argument or or attack has has been dispelled, you know. Um, but but the point is, is is like you mentioned with with pull chain, that's the important thing that Richards talked about with hey, just taking the the ETH code and, and doing the, you know, kind of like the 2.0, right? Changing the proof of work to proof of stake and and building on some of these other things that other chains have already kind of done where you're not making too many changes where where all of a sudden you do have, you know, vulnerabilities for attacks. And and the thing that I like about Richard, and, and a lot of us kind of felt this way with Hex too, where like, you know, um, <laughs> Paul's chain is, is is exactly like Hex, and, and it's and it's obviously unintentional. It's not like some you know mastermind genius strategy that Richard's doing, uh, nice. where where it's like you know, hey, you know, it'll it'll be ready when it's ready. And like sometimes you have these uh, like these different use cases or these different things where where Richard had mentioned with with say Paul's chain where. Um, counting the sacrifice total should have been the easiest thing, right? I agree. And some of the harder things should have been uh, the bridge, but but the bridge was developed by uh, you know Ruth and a couple other people in in just a few days and works flawlessly. And so um, so it is pretty interesting to see. And and to your point as well, like heck, man, we've already waited. Uh, so so Monica and I were chit chatting, and she's like, "Has it been almost a year?" And yeah, it's almost been yeah. a year. I think it's July fifteenth was was like the yeah. announcement. If you actually go to if you go to house, uh, you know, you mentioned as well like some of the the rhetoric against some of these new things. Well, if you go to like howtopulse.com, like that's an absolutely fantastic resource for yes, for it pulse is. Chain and some of these other things, how and that's developed by you know a lot of the people in the in the pulse community, not yep. just you know the hex community. So yep. so it's really cool to see, man, because like. The Hex community, you know, uh, stake Hex doc today, hexcalc.net, you know, all these different things, right? Um, you know, all these different things, you're going to have so much more development and different websites and, and resources created for, for Pulse Chain as well that, that we didn't have for Hex or that maybe Ethereum has, but we'll just get kind of copied over to, to Pulse Chain's different version. So it'll launch when it's ready. And, and yeah, it seems like uh, Richard's doubling down on, on this month and, you know, mm -hmm. hey, I'm excited. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be chaos for sure in the streets. So you so you don't think because um, Monica and Red Squirrel said something that I I, I actually I actually agree with. So oh, you don't yeah. think this was planned because Richard Har if Richard Hart can call the top the way he's done, which is brilliant, <laughs> then I think that this was somewhat planned to launch at this time. If if right, you right, have yeah. foresight in this market. <laughs> I'll believe that psychics are real. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll, I'll yeah, believe that yeah. being a psychic is real because that to, right. to be able to make that to jump to that conclusion to me is yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no I know what you mean. I know what you mean. No, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting point that that you say. I mean, a lot of people don't realize how much of an OG Bitcoiner Richard is, and like, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people, uh, even even Richard had mentioned it, like. Uh, what's that word called when you're kind of like over over cocky? Like my brother and I were talking arrogant. about this. Like, yeah, pretty pretty much arrogant. Um, but but the but the point is, is he was saying like you know, um, but yeah, as far as like calling something at a top or or you know making the top <laughs> things like this. Mm -hmm. Um, when when you say like kind of launching in a in a bear market, I think we all know that that whether it launches you know in a in a couple of days, we're we're yeah. really close to that actual you know bear market itself. Kind of yeah. You know, probably being more happy. Yeah. Hubris. Thank you, Steve. That's yeah. what it was. That's the word I was looking for. Exactly. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I, I don't think I've ever been more excited for a blockchain project to launch because the, the, the fundamentals of this blockchain are, are huge. Same thing with Pulse X. We, we have a golden goose right now. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And you know what? I also want to say this. I have never been in a community that I trust so much. I said October, I mean, September is when I got into Pulse Chain. I mean, chain. Now, I didn't sacrifice for Pulse Chain, but mm -hmm. two very, very, well, <clears throat> not two. If something happened in the past, it's unfortunate that it happened. But mm -hmm. someone in the Pulse Chain community was kind enough. I, I want, he wants to stay anonymous, but I always yeah, give of him that. He was kind enough to give my friend and I an OTC deal upon launch. 
for the first I day see. one sacrifice uh, rate, no matter how much it's That's got. Awesome. So I have to say to that person, God bless you and thank you, uh, because you have no idea how much that actually means to someone who missed out on Pulse Chain and is literally like trying my best to like promote pro Pulse Chain. Because again, you don't make much money. You have a YouTube channel. You and I both know that mm-hmm. we make shekels on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I make enough. Well, with gas prices today, I'm lucky if I can uh, if I can fill up half a tank. Um, so. I'm very bullish on Pulse Chain. And, and what we haven't touched upon yet that I've noticed mm. a lot of people are more bullish on than Pulse Chain in the midterm is Pulse X. What do you yeah. think about that? Oh, yeah. As an individual that's been oh, involved, yeah. what do you think about that? Well, it, it's interesting that you say that too, because like sometimes, you know, everyone will think one thing and then it'll go the opposite way. Oh, or yeah. you just as Motley was saying too, with, you know, some of the people that are listening that like, it's not who's who's in the chat that's Mm -hmm. that's typing but sometimes you know like the godwill or some of these other people that that have such mass that you know one person could really shift a lot of that stuff over um as far as pulse x goes i mean i've never been more bullish right i mean pulse chain itself so they're both you know when you compare pulse chain to pulse x they're they're both deflationary right there's never going to be you know one more token ever minted after it's created and launched when pulse chain launches but um So you've got 25% of the, you know, the fees that get burned on, on Pulse Chain, but then you've got, you know, a different percentage. I think it's like 21 on, uh, you know, as far as Pulse X itself, you know, it's, it's got some of the, the burn as well, but then it's got the, the buy and burn aspect of it where, you know, you've got buy pressure that's, you know, pretty much like someone just market buying. And, yep. and someone was saying, it's almost as if like the, the Godwell, when you look at some of these numbers that it's doing on testnet, yeah. um, I think it's, I think it's a damn sleeping giant, man. And, you know, you see a lot of the people that are, that are more bullish on, on pulse in the short term than, than pulse mm-hmm. X, which is totally fine. I mean, Hey, you know, that's usually what does kind of happen too, is the, you know, one run up here and then, you know, consolidation over to here and kind of back and forth running up. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sleeping on on either man. I mean, you've got some yeah. of the single sided staking with with Pulse X, and um, obviously the 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 numbers are going to be way different. Like people like Wendy's for Tendies had mentioned that you know hasn't even logged into the test net because he already knows what to do. He already knows what his strategy is. And so exactly. some of these people that are like, oh, you know, I'm going to get X Y Z yield on some of the the yield farming or some of the Pulse X staking. You might be uh, severely mistaken with with how how big some of these other bags are that are that are yeah. going to be uh, coming in as well. And not to mention the fact that like Pulse X, like you have people who sacrificed a billion dollars for Pulse X, one billion dollars, and <laughs> I, I I can't believe that that that's 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 nuts to me. Like Pulse X is very interesting in that respect. I just had a thought that I was about to say, and I totally lost my train of thought. But no I, I worries, will, dude, it happens. I, I will say that PulseX has massive potential, just like Pulse Chain, especially with the buy and burn function, especially with being deflationary. Like, oh, this is what I was going to say. Deflationary. Okay. Do you follow mm-hmm. that PulseX testnet bot on Twitter? I do. Yeah, I think I think it was like, yeah, 40, I do. 40 billion, have, 40 billion PulseX has been burned on the testnet, on the testnet. That's insane. Yeah, that's that's, ludicrous. that's ridiculous, dude. That's amazing. That's that that to me goes to show that we have an immensely deflationary cryptocurrency on the way. And more and more it's gonna get rarer and rarer. And imagine how how rare it's going to become as Pulse Chain is utilized more and more, and Pulse X is utilized more and more. So these are things to really think about. To me, PulseX and Pulse Chain are not really short-term holds. They're not. Mm-hmm. Because Pulse Chain and PulseX, they have so much potential in the long term, in my opinion. The fact that so many coins are already piggybacking off Pulse's name, and there's already like, I don't know, I've interviewed like 25 projects, maybe. And that's yeah. not even including the ones that I've missed. It's like mm-hmm. 30 to 40 projects launching on Pulse Chain. Yeah, like that's and the, the, the blockchain ain't even out yet, and there's people yeah. already building on it or attempt or not attempt not attempting, but they're building on something that hasn't even launched yet, which I think is incredible. I mm. think it's something that I am so excited for, and it, it's an understatement to say that this cryptocurrency project 
and its excitement, I have never seen anything like it before. Never. Mm. Even in this yeah. market, even in this market, you have the same excitement. The excitement is not wavering. We're not really mm-hmm. affected. Hex users are really not affected mostly by mm-hmm. this, this downtrend at mm. all. Yeah. Well, and, and that is one thing that, yeah, I wanted to bring up earlier, but, you know, sometimes when you're when you're streaming, you kind of might not get all t- to all your points until later. But, but you know, what people are really going for, you know, the, the price appreciation, that's cool. But if you're getting yield on top of that, then that's that's even better. And that's what a lot of the people were doing with, you know, go back to the to the Luna and things like that, and these these different bots is getting a little bit of yield on on these stable coins and things like that. But but for the fact that you mentioned kind of the the unaffected aspect, I mean, that's the really cool thing is yep. um, if you look at say Big Payday November nineteenth, twenty twenty, the the actual payout per per T share was was super low because the OA had staked and like ninety nine point you know three three or whatever it was percent of of all the total supply. Um, or available, you know, had had been staked, but but the point is, is yeah, it's super exciting, man. Like that that yield is just another value proposition on top of the actual price performance. And I've heard people, I've heard people say this as well, where, and I've heard Richard say this too, which is, you know, which is true. But I've also heard contrary arguments where, you know, ten thousand x, that's the the price appreciation. That's cool, but if you're getting, you know, say like a two x on your coins because of the yield, then you know you might as well have like. 20,000 X, right. Instead of just, just the 10,000, um, because you're getting, you know, twice the copy of coins. And if they both do that same performance. Exactly. And and for my last topic, I want to bring up to you is this, I want to be able to connect traditional inflation and traditional market conditions with everything that's going on right now in the market, not just cryptocurrency, but in general to how hex and pulse chain and pulse X can be an actual hedge against inflation. We're seeing massive amounts of inflation, an 8.2% inflation they, they, they brought up, but basically it's like 20%. We have gas prices. Where you're from, I, I, don't, I don't know what the gas prices are, but in New York where I'm at, it's about four seventy nine dollars a gallon. And um, regarding food, food is up, rent is up, inflation is up. Do you see in your... Being uh, being involved in hex for so long, do you see hex pulse chain and pulse x as an actual hedge against inflation and the the coming recession, whenever that may be, which I think is going to be more is going to happen faster than we actually thought. I do, yeah, I do. I mean, when when you look at some of these other things too, you know, you've heard people say like, because what kind of got me into crypto was was some of the precious metals and some of these things and things like that. And like, just because you have possession of something, like, doesn't mean that it's going to go up when when crap hits the fan type of deal, right? And and you're right when you when you look at the inflation and in the U.S. and kind of just all fiat in general. You kind of just see some of this stuff where it's like, yeah, Monica says gasoline in, in California is six dollars plus. I mean, That's the horrible. other day when I filled up, uh, it was, you know, it was it was over five. It was like five five oh five, and that was with like some sort of discount that I was using. So you know, you're kind of at this point where where people used to kind of you know mock and, and laugh at some of these cryptos, which which uh, which doesn't necessarily go like, you know, some of their stuff was credible, right? Because a lot of these things say in 2017, you know, they were here then kind of like Beanie Babies, but they're not here today. Mm-hmm. But then there's also stuff that that really is in the works, um, things that do surpass those, uh, you know, say they survive the bubbles. And I think that's, you know, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, uh, Hacks, things like that. They can kind of be a hedge against the, the dollar just losing its value every mm-hmm. single day, man, because it's getting ridiculous, even at the, the grocery store and you know, um, I think I think we're definitely due for some harder times when it comes to that kind of stuff. Personally, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And when we have inflation like this and a coming recession, the best hedge against it is passive income. Because to be honest with you, if this if if we have a bubble that's going to burst in the housing market, in the macro environment with the war in Ukraine with rising inflation, with tensions around the world, especially in Eastern Europe, and um, now even tensions in the U.S. with what's going on in D.C. regarding the Roe v. Wade um, issue. This is a time period where 
passive income is more important than ever. It's, it'll, it's, it's called capital preservation. And without it, I, I don't know how people are going to stay afloat without just their standard income. So it's, um, it's, um, it's hard. It's hard. And, and I want to say also vets and crypto, you know, God bless you for your service in, in the military right now. It's not easy to serve right now, especially with what's going on with tension. I spoke to um, a, a woman in security that was in the army yesterday. And um, she said that some of her, um, her friends are now deployed into Poland um, because of the tension that's going on in Eastern Europe. So um, the macro environment right now is very, very, very intimidating from a financial mm -hmm. and a, a conflict standpoint. So let's just hope to God that things die down and this recession comes and, 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 it, and it gets finished quick. But I, I really think that Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X are great hedges against inflation. And I really think that this will be a gold goose for all those involved if they just have patience and willingness. And yes, God bless the police officers. I'll give Frank a shout out because he is a cop in my uh, jurisdiction. So um, I have to say, this is not an easy thing to be. This is not this is not easy right now for everybody. So all I'm gonna say is be patient, be smart, be vigilant, um, always preserve, be protect your capital, look for passive income opportunities that don't look like scams and be, be true to your own financial security because no one's gonna look over your, look at your pocket besides you. Mm, so. that's so true dude that that's so true man like you hear it all the time with uh you know some people whether it was their parents or whoever else you know telling them kind of like where to invest um mm -hmm. or psh, dude you see that like speaking of which you see that with like student loans where the parents are like hey oh. little jimmy let me just co-sign for you and then here now you're a slave for the rest of your life because you know here's a uh you know, like a, an interest rate that's against yeah. the principle of the, the debt, you know, that you can never bankrupt out of. And like, and that's, that's, you know, that's crappy enough, right? Let alone, you know, I know some of the people in the, in the hex community that have mentioned this in the past that, that, you know, they had paid. So they had said that they had had like about like a half a million dollars worth of like student loan debt Horrible. or, you know, some of the stuff. Right. And, and they had, you know, just from the interest uh, against that themselves, they had paid like three hundred thousand dollars and it's like Horrible. that's money that's never going to go to the principal that's just going to the interest so it is really disgusting man because you know you're you have uh i mean yeah that pretty much is usury and you have some of these things but like the opposite side is kind of like you know kind of this the shining city on a hill example where like you can be the bank right you know you mentioned some of the assets too when you had mentioned like the the grant cardone thing well you know, maybe it's not always smart to to do what's the the safest thing, right? Like, even if someone is wanting to to hedge something, it's like you have to hedge it with with your whole bag. But sometimes it's like the venture capitalist kind of move, where where that you know that ten percent can can make a hundred x or a thousand fold, and and all of a sudden it it makes up for that rest of the ninety percent of your portfolio that you that you held on to. So it doesn't always have to be like one way or the other, but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, getting in on the right thing early. That's awesome that you had mentioned one of your one of your friends who shall remain unnamed uh is doing that because because mm -hmm. who else is gonna do that for, for anyone else? I no, promise you it rare. ain't gonna happen. No, it's very rare. It's it's very rare. That person is giving both Frank and I who's in the chat a unique opportunity that I can't thank him enough um, so cool. for. So if he's watching this you're, you're being a financial savior to me awesome. um, and my friend. And, and, and to end on this, I think I think the problem with, with, with a lot of millennials that you're my age, I'm 26, mm -hmm. you're 25, where a lot of our generation is fiscally illiterate. I had a conversation with someone at the gym today, uh, three days ago. Dude's driving a BMW. He's 28 years old. He's got, I asked him, I'm like, bro, why are you driving a BMW? He's like, it's five. I was like, how much are you paying? He's like, 550 a month. I'm like, He's like, but I'm not going to be able to afford it, man. I spent all my yeah. money on Gucci stuff, and I went to college to be a, a, a physician assistant, and I'm not even pursuing it, and I'm 300 grand in debt. And I'm like, bro, you're you're 19 years old. Jeez, dude. Bro, you're never, ever going to be able to get out of that financial rut. So That's scary. Yeah. It is. So, so for those that are younger or even those that are thinking about going to college, be fiscally responsible. I mean, I paid my student loans back, and thank Christ it was because of cryptocurrency. I paid my yeah. cryptocurrency student loans 
back in full because of that, because of crypto. I cashed out in May right before the crash when Bitcoin went down to 28,000 and I paid back my loans. But that's that's an anomaly. Not many people are aware of crypto in that respect. Mm. So um, I want to say Bally at Brand, man, this was a really honest, heart to heart, face to face conversation. And I really want to come on your channel whenever you Good, want. Yeah. And, and whenever you are available, this was an amazing conversation. I really appreciate the the candor and the honesty here and, and the chemistry. I really want to thank you for your time. I know it's been like an hour. So I appreciate the hour that you, you you've spent with me. God bless you and keep doing what you do for Hex. And please, whenever you want me to come on your live stream, please, Dude, hell yeah. I would love to. Dude, awesome. Yeah, you know, and that's the very last thing that I'll say too, because uh, I appreciate your closing statement is uh, it, it's what Wendy's for Tendi said, like the the big the biggest alpha that he said that he could make in this community um, to people is, is make friends, you know, like whether it's the, the crypto fitness challenge with, you know, people that you might meet within there or the Hex and Pulse community, things like that. Um, I've never met more genuine, honest people that I can actually call my friends and, Amen, and that, uh, you know, that, that are kind of in my area too. So small, smaller knit groups that are, that are getting bigger. So thank you again so much. We'll, we'll have you on the, uh, the channel as well soon too. And, and I appreciate what you're doing as well, man. Keep up the kick-ass work. Absolutely. Thank you so much guys. Subscribe to Valley at Brands YouTube and, and mine as well. If you can, it really helps both of our channels. We're out there daily and weekly putting out hex and pulse chain content. We're trying our best here to give you as much information as we can, and we're going to continue doing it. And so please support us. It really helps the channel. Trust me, we're not making much money on YouTube. It's more for informational purposes. We want to help the community. So please, if you can, you guys have a great day now. I hope you guys have a blessed week. And Valley at Brandman, thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.